With Disney marketing and distributing its films, Pixar has generated profits in the billions. But yesterday, Pixar and Disney said they could not reach agreement on renewing their deal. Seen as a big blow to Disney, the news came as a shock to many industry observers. Hello and welcome back to Cancelled Movie Report, the documentary podcast series that talks about the best movies that Hollywood never made. My name is Michael Campbell, but you can call me Cambo. And joining me for this brand new season is my the only co-host I'd want by my side. He's an actor. He's a comedian. He is a, an owner of toys that perhaps are alive. It's Mr. Eden Porter. <laughs> Mate, thank you very much for having me. I'm here. I'm back. I'm excited. This is... This is my happy space. Oh, good. This is my that, happy space, Cambo. That's, that's good to know. I've had a child, mm-hmm. um, and so being out of that space for a short period of time, it's I, I feel like a new man. It's why we've pivoted to kids' entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're covering this particular movie. But are you feeling good about season four? I'm feeling so good. Oh. I'm, fe- I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling a little nervous. Oh. Because who knows what could happen. And take that to anyone who doubted us. We're four seasons in, and we're richer than we ever could have imagined from this podcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what these people can see, but I'm dripping in jewels. Yeah, you we're are. So rich. You're, you're very blinged. Uh, we're talking about a kids' movie this week, something that we don't often do on this show. No. Have we done a kids' film? Uh, maybe out. Crusade? Maybe. Maybe, uh, maybe Crusade. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, this is a kids' film, but also our most requested film of this season. Do this is know that? this is our most requested film. It's tied for our most requested film. Do, who who who's been requesting this? Campbell? There's a bunch on on our Instagram messages, but specifically who was written into us? Yeah. Will Hart from New York. Oh, very good. Uh, Luca Trades and Ryan Smallsman, all the way from Brazil. Ah, Smallsy. Now we've shouted out uh, Ryan before. Fantastic artist. So good. Man. And I, I was separately a fan of Ryan, and then he reached out and he said, "Can you do Toy Story 3? I Said Ryan for you. I was going to do it anyway. <laughs> no, Ryan is actually the one who alerted me to this project. Fantastic. Isn't it great when we hear about these things and we yeah. can pull it all together? Honestly, I love it. <laughs> uh, let's get into the mystery of the original Toy Story 3. The Toy Story franchise is one of the most beloved children's film series of all time. Not only did it usher in an entirely new form of 3D animated films, But it helped establish Pixar as the only animation house in Hollywood capable of making such beloved classics with big box office to boot. So, what could possibly go wrong? Enter former Disney CEO, Michael Eisner. Not Eisner. Now, I have have a question for you to kick this off. Hit me. Have you heard the tragedy (laughs) of Circle 7 animation? I've heard the tragedy of, of Darth Plagueis. <laughs> this could be worse. <laughs> really? Have you ever heard of Circle 7 animation? No, I have not. It doesn't surprise me. It's not a story Disney would tell. <laughs> <laughs> the, so this is the this is the aspect of this story that when, when Ryan messages that I learnt about is something called Circle 7 animation. What is it? We'll get to it in a minute. But I'm going to rewind a little bit. And we're going to set our story in January 2004. Can we do the rewind noise? Oh, there it was. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and here's, here's what we need to know. Uh, and so I should credit some of the research for this has come from a book called Creativity Inc. by Ed Cutmill and Amy Wallace. Ed Cutmill, former the Pixar employee. So we're in January 2004. And Michael Eisner, the former CEO of Disney, and Steve Jobs, the former CEO of Pixar have a falling out. <gasps> so this was the time that Steve Jobs was still very actively involved in Pixar. Steve Jobs was... Steve Jobs, yeah. Okay, okay. Did you know this? No. Oh, you didn't know I this? I didn't know Steve Jobs. Is it... So it's... When Steve Jobs left Apple and started a bunch he, of businesses, he invested he, in Pixar. I didn't realize he had much, like, physically to do with it, though. He had a lot to do with really? it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when he left Apple, when he left, when he was, he was fired, fired from Apple, yeah, yeah. and he started a few different companies, he invested in Pixar, and then even when he came back to Apple... For years and years, he was their CEO. I did not know. Did yeah. you know that? Yeah. Did yeah. you? Did, you, I, did, I read, you, read, did read, you read that in one of your books, Cam? I read Creativity Inc. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to read more. Oh, great! Well, there's an extra fact. I thought people knew that. This no, 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 people don't know that. This is an educational podcast. It is, Kimber. and we tag it as such. Yeah. <laughs> Come <laughs> award season. <laughs> so 
Michael Eisner and Steve Jobs had a falling out. What was this falling out about? Well, you see, Pixar had a five movie deal with Disney. Love it. Let's count them out. Toy Story. Toy Story. Yep. Next one. Uh, Bugs what? Life. Yes. Oh, Bugs <laughs> yeah. Life. Yeah. yeah. I'm you, trying you to go all the way the back. the A, but yeah. A, a Bugs, Bugs Life. life. Uh, Toy Story 2. Monsters Universe. Monsters, Monsters Inc. Inc. Yeah. And Finding Nemo. Where's Cars come in that? Uh, that was number six. Oh, that was number six. So Toy Story, Bugs Life, Toy Story 2, Monsters Inc. And Finding Nemo. However, Michael Eisner said, you're mistaken. That's four movies. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've just got to. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's five movies, okay. Camo. Well, okay, Steve Jobs. <laughs> See, Eisner didn't think that Toy Story 2 should be included in this deal because it was a sequel, sequel. and not an original film. Uh, that's crazy talk, Camo. And it was also developed originally as a straight-to-home release movie. Did you know this? I n- no. Okay, so Toy Story 2 <laughs> in its original I- development was supposed to go straight to video. And then they had a screening when it was almost completed and they went, this is really good. good. Yeah. Let's release this theatrically. They had to go and crunch for a couple of weeks straight to get it like theatrically ready because it wasn't ever developed for that. And then at the last minute, they pulled out like a theatrical release for Toy Story 2. So like uh, like Cars led to the uh, home release of Planes. <laughs> Exactly. The, the other great Toy film. Story 2 was supposed to be the planes <laughs> of the Toy Story franchise. <laughs> So Eisner said, Toy Story 2 doesn't count. You knew I was another film. Wait, do, do you agree? We're no, on no. This, yeah, that's crazy right. talk. It's yeah? a theatrically yeah, cool. released film that made them a ton, ton of, of money. money. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, good. So this led to a split between the two studios, between Pixar and Disney. Now, do you remember this? In the mid-2000s, yes. Yes, Disney and yeah. Pixar yeah. split for a while. Yeah. After 10 months of negotiations, Pixar CEO Steve Jobs announced that the Walt Disney Company had chosen not to renew their contract with Pixar and it was officially dead. Michael Eisner stated that he was okay with this because he believed that the company would produce sequels to Pixar films that would be just as good as Pixar. (laughs) Wah, wah. (laughs) So Eisner's like, we don't need you. We can make make films films, as good as Pixar. Yeah, you've given us the ideas and And we'll just make sequels. They had the rights. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. They yeah. could make crappy sequels exactly. based on the same carrot. So John yeah. Lasseter, the director of Toy Story 1 and 2, uh, when it when he had to announce that this had happened at a meeting of Pixar's 800 employees, Lasseter reportedly said, through tears, it's like you have these dear children and you have to give them up to an adopted convict child molester. <laughs> <laughs> so they weren't happy about it. Oh. Disney were like, buy Pixar, we'll take it from here. Wow. So Eisner opened up a brand new animation studio in Glendale, California, whose sole purpose was to produce sequels, sequels to, to Pixar, Pixar films. films. Yeah. And this new studio was called Circle, Circle 7, 7 Animation. So why was it called Circle 7? After the street on which it was located, Circle 7 Drive. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was opened on March 16, 2005. And Circle 7 Animation is sometimes referred to as Pick's Aunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Really, like a bit of a derogatory. Really sticking to yeah. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this whole new company was designed just to, to develop sequels. sequels. And they did. They developed a lot of material. Just based on those three, four properties. Yes. Wow. So in addition to creating screenplays for sequels to Monsters, Inc., a movie called Monsters, Inc. 2 uh, Lost in Scare Dice, which, by the way, we do have the script yes. for. Yes. Uh, and a sequel to Finding Nemo. The animators at Circle 7 began developing ideas for a third Toy Story film. This is a Toy Good. Story film without Pixar's involvement. Amazing. Among the rejected ideas was a script that involved Woody and the gang finding toys that had been stolen out of Andy's grandmother's attic in a whodunit-style mystery. Ooh. And if that sounds interesting to you, yeah. we have that script too. But that's not the <laughs> that script. That actually does sound pretty interesting. That's not the script we're talking about today. Disney chose a draft that had been submitted by a screenwriter called Jim Hertzfeld. And um, Bob Hildenberg and Rob Muir did some rewrites on the script. Yep. And this is what's commonly known as the recall script. And the reason I've picked this draft is this is the one that has all of the concept art. Oh, great. So there's a yeah. lot of concept awesome. art. We for love this concept film. art. And like I'm talking like a lot of concept art. You'll be able to see it over on our Instagram pages. 
Uh, I said pages, like we have more than oh, the right. Nice. <laughs> so concept artists, uh, they worked on developing the look and the character designs for the new characters in yep. this film. Uh, and uh, Jim Martin did a lot of the concept art that you'll probably be seeing on our Instagram pages. Uh, so this is where we are now. Okay. Circle seven, Circle 7 have written multiple Pixar sequels, yep. have developed them to be ready because they don't need Pixar, don't anymore. Need Pixar anymore. With that line What up, could go wrong, Kimbo? Should we get into the story? Should we see what Disney thinks would be a Pixar level <laughs> film? Before we do that, I want to give some credit to an article called Unmade Toy Story 3 Buzz Lightyear Recall Script by Andrew G on medium.com. Uh, he actually did a really great script summary, and I've used parts of his, expanded it a little bit, in this talent. So let's get into the film. We start in a focus group room at the Waka Waka Toy Company, located in their Taiwanese factory. A group of boys is let in, and they begin playing with prototype toys. They eventually gravitate towards a vaguely Buzz Lightyear-esque action figure called Dax Blaster. And he's from the same Star Command universe as Buzz. Some Waka Waka executives are watching and they're very pleased. Dax could be the solution to their Buzz Lightyear situation. It's pretty ominous. Start. Yeah. There's a Buzz Lightyear and there's, situation. There's, this concept of the factory, uh, you'll be yeah. seeing it on the screen at the moment if you're watching on YouTube or it's on our Instagram pages. Uh, it's like ominous factory. You can yeah, imagine yeah, like yeah, a lightning yeah. crack happening yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. Does it have smokestacks? It does. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah I, I can imagine so. <laughs> so we cut to the Davis household. Do you know the Davis household? Andy. That's Andy's yeah. last name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I find a lot of people don't know that they're, they're called the Davis, Davis family. Said, yeah. yeah. I.e. Andy's house, yes. Woody goes around Andy's room greeting all the toys. You know, he's classic. You, know, you walk around, hey, how are hey, you doing, hey, guys? Partner. Andy is going on a school field trip and he's going to spend a week living like it's the 1700s. And his mom is the classroom volunteer, so she's going as well. Woody finds a bunch of toys at Andy's computer and they're looking through his emails. So he approaches them. So, guys, what's new in cyberspace? Ah, good news and bad news. Bad news, Andy's mom is bidding on four items. Good news, none of them are toys. Way to stay ahead of the wave, gang. Never know what Christmas will bring. Yeah, that's the idea, Woodrow. Best offense is a good defense. And speaking of defense... Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think, Woody? If this year we take a more uh, active approach to handling the holiday season. Now, I'm not sure I follow you, Ham. Well, it seems our boy Andy didn't finish his last emo note to Granny. So we thought we'd finish it for him. Dear Grandma, I know it's kind of early to talk about Christmas, but all I want this year is books. Hey, dogs, that's perfect. No, wait. And Molly says she just wants clothes. Now it's perfect. Send it, Piglet. Ham, get your hoof off that mouse. We can't send that email. It's not right. Woody, do you have mad cowboy disease? If we bang out one of those babies and spam it to every one of the kids' relatives, bam! All the stress and horror of the season of giving is gone. And we know Andy doesn't read enough, so it's really a win-win. Ma'am, Ellie did. Oh, we worked all day on your own! No! And I better not catch anyone forging another email like that. Or else. Let's go, boy! Or else what, Sheriff? You're gonna run us all out of town? How come Woody always gets to make the decisions for all of us? Yeah, who broke and made him Sheriff? But... Woody's always been our leader. I know that, Walnut Brain, but why? Is it because he's the toy that happened to come with a fake plastic badge? I don't think you toys realize what's involved with keeping his little bedroom community up and running. So until you've walked a foot in Woody's boots, you should show him your support. Yeah, well, let's see how supportive you are when Grandma runs out and buys Andy a new Dax blaster, though. A Dax what? 
And he got some junk mail about an hour ago from WakaWaka.com. That name sounds familiar. It should. You got it stamped across your tight rear, Lightyear. Been checking out his rear, have ya? Why not? He's in good shape. And yours would be tight, too, if you weren't such a Mr. Couch Potato. Here, take a look. Coming soon to a store near you. From beyond infinity and beyond? It's Dex Blastar of Star Command! This must be some kind of joke. Everybody knows there's no beyond infinity and beyond. Oh, click that, Ham. Let's see a picture. No picture. What's all that about? Eh, uh, maybe he's so new, he's not complete yet. That, or they want to create a buzz. Who wants to create a buzz? The people that created buzz. Thanks for pointing that out, Rex. Yeah, it says he's totally loaded with gadgets. Oh, please. Anybody will tell you it's not the equipment, it's how you use it. Observe. Buzz Lightyear reporting for duty. And if that's not enough, Let's see if duck blisters can do a little something we in the industry like to call falling with style. So this is the introduction to our There we film. go. Okay, this is good. This is good. We need to shout out our voice cast, man. It's very good. There's a lot of crazy characters. There are. I know. There are. And whenever we, we recreate these scenes in these scripts, it always points out something to us that I hadn't always noticed. So back in our Star Wars episode, we said they're always talking during action sequences. Yeah, yes. And this one, Toy Story films always have a bunch of little asides yeah. and a bunch of characters talking over each other at once. That They're the two They do marks. little like meetings. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of that. And then the, everyone will talk at once. Yeah. And they have to be like, guys, <laughs> guys, guys. guys. <laughs> What about Beyond Infinity and Beyond? That's, yeah, Dax Blaster. Right, the really... new Buzz Lightyear, the threat to Buzz Lightyear. That's some great writing there. <laughs> so, obviously, he said, what about falling with style? And, of course, Buzz leaps. Yeah, it, yeah. Except in mid-flight, his wings retract Ooh. unintentionally, and he plummets to the ground, and he inadvertently ends up turning on a vacuum cleaner. It's spinning around the room, going wild. Oh, the vacuum, it sucks up some of those little green aliens. And as Buzz tries to help, he actually gets, he starts malfunctioning. And he gets sucked up into the vacuum himself. He gets sucked into a vacuum cleaner. Into the vacuum cleaner. And there's some concept art of this whole sequence Buzz. as well. Buzz, yeah. Into a vacuum That's a cleaner. big toy. It is a big toy. I'm not sure. Uh, Woody and Jesse, they eventually manage to turn off the vacuum and free Buzz and the aliens. But yeah, Buzz, something's some up with Buzz and he's malfunctioning. Malfunctioning, okay. So Woody has a talk to Buzz to discuss the malfunctions. And Buzz tries to brush it off. But he ends up malfunctioning even more during this conversation, including his karate chop action. And he ends up hitting himself in the face and his hand flies off. After the two retrieve the hand from under Andy's bed, Andy himself shows up to pack for the trip uh, with his mum in tow. He grabs Buzz and is about to put him in the suitcase when his mum tells him that they didn't have toys in 1776, so he oh, can't take Buzz. There we go. And as he begins to apologize to Buzz, the space ranger malfunctions again and his hand flies off and scratches Andy's cheek. <laughs> And in his mom, they head out to catch their ride. But now he's he's a danger. See, this is so what I'm what I'm leaning towards, there's like a almost like a product recall. Like they hit their This is known as the recall draft. Even. Yeah, so yeah, okay. Uh, I think, okay, I think good. you're under something. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So the rest of the toys, they confront Buzz about this problem. Uh, but again, he says he's fine. But Ham thinks the problem is the chip, and the only way the only place he can get a new chip is the factory. <gasps> So the other toys decide they're going to send him there against his will. And what? They have a scene where they grab him and they force him down and they put him in a box and they seal the box up and they slap a packing label on it. And this is what I love. It says, the next day the box gets taken by the shipping company, which means he was in that box like all night. Some kind of sensory deprivation situation going on there. Poor Buzz. Yeah. This is, um, this is almost... Yeah, it's like if you've got a someone that's addicted to yeah, drugs. like a smackhead. Like, yeah, you like and you lock, lock him in, in a room. room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's good dark, this is what they've done. So, yeah, they've stuffed him into a box. So are we slapped a label are on Are we it. assuming they've got the address and they've paid postage? Yeah, I assume they probably looked it up on. Oh, they explained the postage. Oh, okay, don't, good. Don't, yeah, 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 plot hole. They, yeah. Don't, they don't call me plot hole porter <laughs> for nothing. Jim Hertzfeld would never allow a plot <laughs> hole like yeah, that. Good. Uh, writer of this script, in case you didn't remember. <laughs> um, 
Yes, so they've sent him off against his will to the Waka Waka Toy Company. And later that day, Buzz is gone and the rest of the toys are around Andy's computer again. And um, Ham and Potato Head are playing Operation to the side. But they're all starting to feel a bit funny about what they've done. Well, it had to be done. And who knows, maybe Buzz will like getting a new chip. Oh, yeah, surgery's a blast. Rex Moron MD. Hey, do you think if we went on the FedOps website, we could track him? Absolutely. Just let me check today's top stories and baking news and then... Holy twice cooked pork! Look at this headline. Popular toy recalled. So Big Shot Toy is the R word. It's me. It's me. I just know it's me. What's wrong with you? I have a chronic personality disorder. Look at me. I'm a nervous Rex. He's the world's most famous action figure. But now this popular space ranger is being called a space danger. Land sakes, it's Buzz. Find any boy on this big blue marble of ours and chances are you'll find him too. Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. A worthy destination, but Infinity will have to wait, as this super-selling spaceman will be heading instead to his manufacturer in Taipei, Taiwan, where they've issued a global recall following malfunctions that have led to a number of injuries, including poked eyes, scratched skin, the potential to swallow a loose part. And in Chicago, investigators are looking into whether the wings of a broken buzz may have knocked over a candle and triggered last week's 10-alarm blaze, the city's most dramatic fire since Miss O'Leary had a cow. Whoa! Anyone owning the doll should check the Waka Waka website in coming days for instructions on how to send your broken buzz back to the factory, where they'll be promptly replaced free of charge. Reporting for business.com, a after stupid doll... Did they say Buzz would be replaced? Oh no! What have we done? I'll tell you what we've done. We just let martial law here send our Buzz to infinity and the great beyond! Well, I guess you'll never have to worry about Buzz being Andy's favorite toy ever again, eh, Woody? If that's your real name. Have you all gone mad? Next to Andy, Buzz was... I mean, is my best friend. I'm not going to sit here playing some crazy blame game when we should be finding a way to save him. But it's too late. He's already gone. Ham, can we ship another box? We'll draw as long as that FedUp's number we took from Al's toy barn stays valid. We could ship worldwide and infinitum. Good, because if I'm not mistaken, they also offer two-day air, which will get us there the same day as Buzz. And all on Mr. Chicken's nickel. Let's hop to it, gang. We got ourselves a fed up playing to catch. You won't catch them with any copyright infringement. This is. I was <laughs> going to say, is that, is that a world? Is that a world building from other ones? Uh, was that fed ups? I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think, think so. so. I, I think, think it's so. just to get around having to pay a license. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, correct. Um, and I imagine the video players like Video Tube or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Interestingly, though, all the computers in the film are referred to as Max, which is interesting because Steve Jobs is the CEO of Pixar, but this isn't Pixar. Wouldn't it have been yeah. like no, no Max? Yeah, yeah. That's I found weird. that weird. Yeah, that just, is in, weird. In the script, they're specifically called out to be Max. Max. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. But this is the plan. Buzz okay. has been recalled and he's, he's, he's going to go off the factory. He's going to be in danger now. So interestingly enough, they had a voucher, right? Yeah. That well, they could pay for yeah, the shipping. They're using, they're in Toy Story 2, Al's toy barn, the, the villain, mm. they're using his account. Yeah. So he's paying for all the shipping. And yet they chose to send Buzz on the <laughs> slowest possible one when they yeah. could have done it by air. <laughs> That's true. Great. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. Yeah. Also, I'll, I'll say this. All of the toys will turn on Woody on a dime. On a dime. Mr. Potato Head. I thought he was mates. Like, I thought they were mates. Like they're not all complicit in stuffing in action, Buzz yeah, into, into that box. box. Like, yeah. what have you done, Woody? Yeah, come on. You forced it, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I, um, yeah. Slinky Dog as well. <laughs> So great. Ernest. Oh, just as a character. Just as yeah, a character. Right. Just Ernest yeah. voiced. Yeah. Very, very good. Very yeah, old uh, Jim Varney. Jim Varney, yeah. yeah. The croakiest voice in Hollywood. Oh, so good. 
So Woody, Jesse, Bullseye Ham, Rex, Slinky Dog, and Mr. Potato Head hop into another box and the other toys have set it off for far shipping so they'll end up in Taiwan the same time as Buzz. Must be nice. Yeah. Must be nice. Express First shipping. First class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Buzz arrives at the factory and he gets an R tag put around his neck and he gets dumped onto a big conveyor belt. And there's, there's concept art for all of this. And there he meets a fun little clown toy. Uh, and suddenly he realizes that the art, it doesn't stand for repair because the belt ends with a giant contraption called the Smasher. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pulverizing toys. And it's using an electromagnet to grab the valuable metallic parts out of oh the toys, God. like stripping them down. And we get a small action sequence here where Buzz, he's jumping around conveyor belts trying to avoid the big Smasher. And what year was this? Uh, 2005. Okay, I'm just thinking Attack of the Clones. I'm oh, getting yeah, Attack of yeah. the Clones vibe from <laughs> yeah, this massively. Yeah, it would have been maybe like a year or yeah, two after, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is, honestly, it's a little bit. He's jumping yeah. around conveyor belts, uh, battle droids everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah correct, <laughs> correct. So he jumps off the conveyor belt and runs over to another one, and he's attempting to save the toys there. But this one is for the toys that are being repaired. And they tell him that the R doesn't mean repair, it means recall. Yeah. And recall toys, it's no good for them. Oh. And Buzz vows that he's going to get out of the factory. And he, he, he runs off. Meanwhile, the other toys arrive in Taiwan. and Well rested. Well, yeah. With their sunglasses on. <laughs> they a look my ties. fantastic. Buzz, yeah, Buzz. What's it over there? The Smasher. <laughs> yeah. good. So they're on a truck from the airport to the factory. And Jessie, she starts freaking out because she's been in prolonged darkness. Of course, remember, she's claustrophobic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, because she was put in the, yeah, she put yeah, the box. box. Uh, she, she punches her way out of the box, and she ends up going all the way up on top of the truck to try and get some fresh air. But they all think that she's jumped oh, no. out of the truck, and there's a big commotion, and Woody accidentally ends up pushing the box off the truck altogether, and it lands on the road, and they're, they're all in the street dodging cars and trying to get off the street. And they tumble out of the box. They regroup on the side, like a little side alley on the street. Is Jessie still on the truck? Jessie hops off the truck. Oh, she's still off the And she okay, runs okay. So over to together. join them. Yeah, yeah. They're all together on a little side street in Taiwan. How are we doing? Everybody okay? Oh, pretty good. Considering you just pushed us in front of a bus. We could have been roadkill, Woody. What were you thinking? That Jessie fell off the truck? Okay. And Watts Rescue and Recovery, Rule 1. Stay together. And leave no toy behind. Well, thanks, partner, but now we've all been left behind. With no clue how to find the factory. Relax. The address is on the box, and the box is sitting right there by that street sweeper. Tidy bunch, these Taiwanese. Oh, oh terrific! Fine. That's what just God. exactly what we needed. Easy now, this is no time to panic. Oh, you know a better time? We're lost on the streets of a foreign city. Eight thousand miles from home. We have no clue where we're going. No way to get there. And oh, one more thing. We're toys! Oh, what the hell are we doing? This is really it. We're never going to get home. Enough! The fed up truck was heading that way. So that's the way we'll go. How come only you get to decide? Yeah, there's no I in team, Woody. No, and there's no you, or you, or any kind of you either. So we can either stay here and argue while Buzz gets replaced, or you can follow me to the factory, which, more than likely, is somewhere this way. And off they go. Of course, we, we pan out. They go on the wrong way. Oh, they no. go on the wrong way. What is that? What was that line? These, these Taiwanese, they're, 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 I can tell you, it's tiny bunch, these Taiwanese. <laughs> Now, not like it, are, are you picking up on perhaps a casual racism vibe? <laughs> yeah. Because let mean? me tell you, there is some casual racism in this script against Taiwanese people. Uh, not just Taiwanese. Oh, okay. Um, I've got some thoughts, and we're going to get to one. In fact, in just a moment. Hang but on, have I? Have I totally missed? This? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. They're now good. in 
Taiwan. So okay, so gonna, now it's expected. Ramp up. Okay, okay, <laughs> good. Because I thought maybe I just have blindness. Yes. Uh, so they're they're walking the wrong direction. They're going away from the factory. But we now cut back to Buzz, and he's trying to sneak through the factory. But his voice malfunctions, uh, and it gives him away. And an executive finds him and decides that she's going to bring him to her next meeting. And she goes into the meeting and she leaves them on the table as they're preparing for this big conference call that they're about to have. And in the conference room as well is the now finished version of Dax Blastar and his sidekick, Comet. Is now, Comet a dog? Comet is a dog. Yeah, that's so. Here's the thing. I think that Comet was written to be voiced by a black actor. Okay. Why would you say I've that? I've got some Rambo? script excerpts here of lines that Comet says. Could you just read some of these for me? Okay. <laughs> okay. In, in, uh, just in, in my in normal, your normal voice. voice okay. would be preferred. Okay. <laughs> for Shizzle, the big man's in the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are money, oh. baby. They built this company on your <laughs> white rear. Light year, mad props, dog. How are they spelling dog? Yeah, D H W G. Seriously, slap me some plastic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. Um, it's kind of racist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, anyway. That's, that's not, really that's, interesting. That's, that's not the only one. So uh, oh, wow. <laughs> look forward to that. Oh my god, Cambo. But uh, they're starstruck by Buzz. Yep. Um. And they're, they're, they're kind of fawning over him, being like, you're the best-selling toy this company's ever had. Yeah. And uh, do they make, can I just say, yeah. any did any voice actor linked to, to was it Dax? Uh, Dax Blastoff. Dax Blastoff. Uh, no, there's, there was no, no pre-casting. The, the only casting like that, yeah. that we can assume, because I guess none of this was even confirmed yet, was the original cast, voice back, cast. Yeah. Uh, so the executives, they returned to start their teleconference. And they discuss their Buzz Lightyear problem. And the woman who found Buzz uh, on the floor, the mm. executive, she says the company is going to offer a coupon to anyone sending a Buzz Lightyear doll back to them. They'll get $10 off the new Dax Blastar doll instead. And as they talk, one of the executives mentions, by the way, be sure that old man Kagoy's office doesn't get CC'd on this memo. I have enough headaches right now. What? Uh, who is old man Kagoy? And why don't they want him to know about this? So, because he loves. Oh, maybe. Loves I, I'd never Buzz dare Light give it away. No, no, I'd no, never no. dare he give it away. It. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> the Taiwanese toy maker, <laughs> Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but they said that they'll announce this program at the big party that they're having that night for the grand unveiling of Dax. And as the meeting ends, the executives grab Buzz and they take him to what's called the archive room. And it's a room where they keep one of every toy that they've ever recalled. Oh. So what, what do you think of this plot overall, by the way? Do you think uh, it's I, sufficiently Toy Story-ish? Yeah, I think it's a good plot. Yeah. I think the recall plot's good. Toy Factor is a great idea. Yeah, to, and, and, and a, a way that you can have just crazy other toys, yeah. like recalled ones, yeah. things that are brought, that's always fun. And you've got a real, like, uh, you, you, we're about to meet some of the other toys in the archive room, but you can imagine, like, the what is it, the, the Island of Misfit toys yeah, vibe, yeah, all right? That, yeah, they're yeah. all a bit broken, but maybe together they're they not. Can, oh, 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 that'd be a good theme. Yeah. Uh, I also think that movies these days, they're not racist enough. So oh, uh, okay. for me, I'm, pump that up. I'm loving the... No, these yes. are rookie numbers. <laughs> <laughs> pump up those numbers. Pump up those numbers. <laughs> so the other toys are now stuck in a Taipei marketplace. And Woody sees... <laughs> you were going to say prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took a dark, yeah, dark yeah. turn. <laughs> Slinky was smuggling yeah. in all kinds of stuff. Oh, it'd be uh, ham, wouldn't it? Ham, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Woody sees a toy store and surmises that the toys, they'll know where the toy factory is. Oh, that's good. And he and Bullseye dart across the street and they go to the store. And Woody, he starts trying to talk to the toys, but none of them speak English. I was, I was going to say, do they speak English? They do not. Now. <laughs> Don't be racist. Now, now, now. How would Woody communicate to a toy that doesn't speak English? Okay. 
So what you what you should do, yeah. like maybe write a, mm-hmm. a picture or something yeah. of like a factory yeah. with like arrows mm-hmm. to it and be mm-hmm. like this. You probably wouldn't just shout like slowly and loudly. Slowly and in, loudly. In an offensive accent. Oh, you've hit the trifecta. <laughs> oh, good. He speaks in what what is sometimes <laughs> oh, God, no. what is sometimes referred to as um and I don't like this term, but Ingerish. Oh what? Which is the the cartoony thick um yeah. Asian accent that is used to mock Asian people. He speaks, he speaks like that. And it's written phonetically like that as well. Oh, my God. Ri- this is 2005, Cambo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you would have thought it's 1942 or something. Yeah, correct. <laughs> like, they're like weird Japanese Songs war the cartoons South. or something. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. my I'm so scared they would have animated Big Buck Teeth as well. Yeah, I'm be that's what it is. Oh, my God. So yeah, he speaks in a in a racist Chinese accent to try and get This is Tom across. Hanks doing this as well. This is the way I think, I know. would Tom Hanks have done it? I can't tell because I, again, two thousand and five, I don't think people were going like, Hey, does this play as a joke? No, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's Tom Hanks is not doing that. Yeah. But he's but, like what So we've got but, but Tim what, Hunk. So while he's doing this, uh a mother she Absentmindedly, she picks up Bullseye and she buys him. And she oh, tro- chucks him the into the, the stroller with her toddler. Oh, so they're not. I thought there was another joke there about like cooking the oh, horse no, meat yeah, or something. Like that. Yeah, there no. probably is. No. I probably just skipped past it. Good. I know she puts Bullseye in the stroller with her toddler. And Woody sees this as they're leaving the store and he manages to climb the stroller. There's a bit of a, a sneaky little sequence where he's trying to rescue uh, uh, Bullseye. From the baby? From the from the toddler. Played, out, played out by. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in a suit, yeah. yeah. Woody's in the uh, in the stroller trying to rescue Bullseye. Yeah. And the other toys see it and they go to try and rescue him and they all jump in the stroller and then we come. Oh, so, so they're so all they're, in the stroller. They're still trying to save Bullseye yep. from the stroller. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So Buzz, he's taken to the archive room uh, and there's bins full of different recall toys and they're kind of like, I guess, pseudo cells, right? So they're all sitting in their different little bins. And Buzz, he's feeling pretty down so about it. So he's the time in his prison. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's the time when he's risen, you're right. Okay, good. Uh, a warden comes over. Yeah. Raps be- on the... <laughs> beats the living hell out of one of them. Chow an example. Yeah, water torture going in the background. Yeah, good. When Buzz gets there, he punches the biggest guy in the <laughs> yes. yard to make sure people know that he's not to be messed with. They've got one of those um, the birds with the water that <laughs> tap on someone's forehead. <laughs> So Buzz, he's sitting in his little uh, uh, recall bin and he's feeling pretty down about himself. But another toy comes and approaches him. Hey there, mister. I'm Rosie. Cozy Rosie. What's your name? It says it right there on the cage, kiddo. Awesome. Too bad I can't read. I'm Buzz. What's a cute little toy like you doing in a place like this? Oh, long story short, I was supposed to keep kids warm and toasty at night. (laughs) But I kept burning the toast. Excuse me, gotta stop, drop, and roll. Rosie! How many times have I told you? Don't go near the new guys until we know why they're here. It's not safe. I know, but he looked so friendly. That's because I am friendly. And lady, I can assure you, I'm not a danger in any sense of the word. Right. And I just have a bad knee. One that happens to spring out like a switchblade. (laughs) Welcome to the recall room. I'm Jade. The mean toys call her Jade the Blade. Thanks for sharing, Rosie. Hello, Jade. I'm- Please. There's not a toy in the joint who hasn't heard a Commander Buzz best-selling toy ever light year. Your Buzz Lightyear? No way! You mean we get to share a shelf with the most popular spaceman ever? Cool! Oh. Does that happen a lot? Only when I think about it. Or don't. So what did you do, Buzz? Who did you hurt? Your kid? Who? Forget the who. Let's hear the what. And don't spare the gory details. Did you pinch him? Poke him? Taught him? Maybe he choked him. I turned my kid blue. Does it matter? It was an accident. I'd never intentionally hurt my kid. We're all dangerous. Just the same. Which is why we're locked up forever. Forever? I don't think so. I got a boy named Andy to get home to and... 
What's your problem, Candyman? The name is Juju B. B. He was supposed to be the next Pez. And get over yourself, Lightyear. Plenty of us recalled toys had a kid once. Including me. Oh yeah, tell us about it, Juju. Again? His name was Billy. He was such a wonderful boy. And I'll never forget the very last thing he said to me. Ah, oh, I'm blind! My eye! My eye! <laughs> He's out! Shorty just broke out! What? How? Hid in the cart of the guy who brought Buzz here. He's on the factory floor. Shorty's a short-circuiting walkie-talkie. He's been planning this break for years. Shorty, they're surely over. This is Shirley. Over. I squawked and I got noticed by a passing factory worker. They put me on a conveyor. I'm going against Fix. Ask who he's riding with. What? Who cares? Ask him. Who else is on the belt with you, Short? Well, I see a clown. A really happy clown. <laughs> How old are you? Shorty, get out of there now! What? Who is this? They're going to smash you. Smash me? Don't be ridiculous! Ah! Something just pinned me! Shorty? Ah! Oh, good lord, it's huge! A monster is smashing everything to pieces! Ah! Oh, God! Ah! Shorty? Shorty, come in! Shorty! They're smashing recalls now. Why? Because it's cheaper than fixing us. Or at least that's what all the men in the suits say. This wouldn't happen if Kagoi was still around. He cared about toys. Kagoi? As in, old man Kagoi? Founder of the company. Rumor has it the board of directors fired him and shipped him off to the booby hatch. What? No, they were talking about him in the meeting today. He's still here. Old man Kagoi? Is still here? Yes. And they were saying they don't want him to know anything, to get any memos. But if somehow we can get one of the memos to him saying what they're doing... Be quiet, Lightyear! Do you want more of these toys to end up just like Shorty? You all heard it. The awful ugly truth. From now on, any recall found on the factory floor gets smashed. Well, I, for one, don't care. I've got to get home to Andy. And as soon as I find a way out of here... There is no way out of here. Not any time soon. Shorty waited over a year for that door to open, and odds are it'll take a year to happen again. I don't have a year. In fact, I don't know how long I have. But I know staying here isn't any kind of life. Hey, we live just fine down here in the Waka Waka Recall Room, Spaceman. And it's your life now, too. So you better get used to it, Buzz. <laughs> Buzz. Yeah, so uh, it's a pretty dark premise. It's a pretty dark premise. I, I like, I love the, they've all got their little thing wrong. With yes, them. Like, yeah, like yeah. that chick bursting the flames is let's, great. Let's go over some of the yeah, characters yeah, we met. It's so, really good. So uh, most important to the story is Cozy Rosie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she bursts into she's flames. Great. That's a cool, yeah. like thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 She, she's a little sweet, innocent little um, like plush toy. Yeah. There is concept art for Cozy Rosie. You'll oh, see it on great. Instagram. You'll see it on screen right now if you're on YouTube. Uh, and then there's Jade the Blade. Yeah. Yeah, so she has a little retracted thing in her leg that sticks out. Sticks out. And it's, yep. it's quite sharp. Uh, and then there's, there's the other toys don't aren't in it quite as much. So Juju BB, he's always spitting things at people. He's like shooting little <laughs> Pez-style <laughs> yeah. candies at people because that's that's his malfunction. Uh, and then there's just like a, a, a slew of other like broken it's toys quite, in some I think way. it's good. I think it's really fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but this is where we are now. Buzz is determined that he is going to escape the factory and the other toys are lost somewhere in Taiwan. Well, we have come to the end of the first part of our first report in our new season all about Circle 7 Animations, Toy Story 3. We really hope you enjoyed this episode and we would love it if you guys could subscribe, be it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you know what, wherever the hell you like to listen. Uh, but that is awesome. That's how we get discovered. It would also be terrific if you could leave us a review, a five-star review. That is how we get discovered on the charts. And in fact, Aiden, do you have an example of a yes, five-star review I've that got a five- this very show has received? Here we go. Now, this is this is actually pretty recent. Um, P- 
Perfection, five stars. Absolutely my favorite podcast. I love the pacing, content, sincerity, humor, and passion that oozes out of each and every episode. That's a that's that's a pretty good review, mate. Look, we're his favorite podcast, and between me, you, and this review lever, he's our favorite listener. Um, by the way, any anything anyone that uses the word oozes yeah. in the review, <laughs> it's pretty good in my book. But reviews like that, that's what really helps us. And you know what? You can do it in your app right now. Also, uh, if you want to support the show, if you like us even more than leaving a review, we actually have a Patreon. And guess what? This month. There's a casting call episode. That's oh, our bonus I podcast. I love those little cheeky casting call episodes. We talk about the what ifs of casting. We've got a Toy Story one related to this very film this month. Mate, that is synergy right there. Do you want to hear the original voice of Buzz Lightyear? Oh, do I more than anything it's, in the world? It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, join us on Patreon. Hear that. Hey, what do you think of this movie? And have we missed anything? We would love to hear from you. Uh, you can always get in touch with us at cancelmovies at gmail.com or at cancelmovies on all the socials. And if there's a cancel movie project you've always wanted to hear about, why not let us know? People wrote in about this project. We and didn't we did know it. about it, and we're doing it for them. We need to shout out our amazing cast. Andrew Hamblin was Woody and Ham. Uh, Mr. Potato Head and Rex were both Tim Harrod. Jesse and Mrs. Potato Head were both Aaliyah Amor. Slinky was Jay Zeta. Jade was Louise Cox. And Danny Silla was Rosie and Shirley. Not to mention Bill Sunderland was also the business reporter and Juju BB. I'm Michael Campbell. I've hosted and edited this episode. And Eden Porter, that man over there, he was my co-host as well. Thank you for having me. And we both produce the show. Make sure you're listening next week to hear how this all concludes. But if you're curious, here's a sneak peek. We haven't done a thing right since we got off the plane. I'm sorry. Did you just say we? Because we are all in this big mess due to one bad decision after another made by a certain Sheriff Woody doll whose name shall remain anonymous. Hey, I didn't sign up for this job. You think I like being the guy who makes all the decisions and constantly has to tell everybody else what to do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't. But until then, take care.